I'm John with StrongDM Support. Today we're going to talk about resource tagging and access rules. So let's get started. We're going to take a look at these two YAML files. Uh, specifically, the one on the left is going to be our basics, right? We're going to learn to walk before we run. Uh, and then the right will be our more uh, experience. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, but we will say uh, the left is a shopping list, right? So let's think about that. Normally when you go shopping, right, uh, you make a list and that list is normally broken up into various categories uh, to make it easier for yourself, right? So when you go into a store, uh, you know that certain items are grouped together. So let's say fruit for an example or vegetables, right? Those tend to be in the same areas uh, as opposed to like, let's say frozen foods, uh, or meat, right? If we want to have that as its own category. So those would be different ones. Uh, but for this example, we'll just go ahead and say uh, fruit and vegetables. So up here at the top, let's say if I'm going shopping, uh, I want some apples, right? I'm going to make an apple pie. So I want a few different types. Uh, we could say Granny Smith. We could say Fuji. Uh, we could say even Red Delicious. Right, those are a few different apples that I want to get, uh, and these are the three specifics within Apple uh, that are under the fruit category. Um, so you can start to see how we're breaking this down to have a quick and easier sort of like uh, categorization uh, and organization, really. So these these branches, uh, and then say I also want to pick up oranges, maybe some pears. Um, so those would be in its own. I could, you know, have different types of oranges or pears uh, within those, or I could say berries, right? I could go through and add that. Uh, and let's say uh, there was a subset within there of blue uh, and then black, right? Uh, or <laughs> straw, right? If I didn't write out the whole word, Right, we would, we would have those different categories. You could write it out or you could just use the root uh, for each. Um, so those would be different ones. Uh, and then let's say vegetables, right? So I'm gonna get vegetables. Uh, I need to spell that correctly. I think it's still not spelled correctly, but it doesn't matter. This is just a demo. Uh, <laughs> so we have Brussels sprouts, right? Uh, let's say we get lettuce, there's a couple of different types. Uh, maybe I'll get butterhead and iceberg, and then I'm gonna buy some eggplant. So this is just the basics. Uh, so then we, we think about this and extrapolate it to what we wanna do is tagging as far as environment goes, right? Uh, so let's do that. So we'll start out and say a lot of our resources, right? When we're thinking about our servers, our back end, our front end, uh, those types of things, there's, there's different parameters we could uh, basically go around. So one will say environment, right? So we could say environment, uh, we'll have prod and dev and QA. We could even say test, right? Um, and within our test, uh, we could have a local. So we need to go through and add that. Um, so these could be some of our specific tags, environment equals prod, environment equals, t you know, dev, environment equals QA. Uh, and we can start to think about grouping as far as uh, teams go. So we have engineering and within engineering, we have QA, we have front end, we have back end. Uh, we have support as its own team and support could even have its own tiers, right? So we could say tier one and then tier two. Uh, you can have your finance team. Uh, so those are another good way of categorizing your sort of resources. Uh, and then we can think about specifics that are true. So let's say PII is true, right? We want to do a key value here, or we could just say PII. Um, but we'll use true in this sense. Um, we also have web servers. We have back end. Uh, we have front end, right? Uh, some of these can overlap, right? You have a front end team, you have front end servers, you can make sure that those match. Uh, so this is, this is how you want to start thinking about breaking down, right? What are the most logical uh, categorizations that you can have to tag similar items? Because what you can do is then use this for your access rules. And we'll go over that in just a second. 
Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of different resources I have in my account, right? So, uh, you know, we'll say this one's a, a back-end server, this one's a web server, so it's front-end. Uh, you know, we'll say this one houses uh, some back-end, this one, uh, or actually this one doesn't, this one does, uh, and actually let me force a refresh. Uh, oh, looks like. I misspelled that tag. But anyway, uh, what we'll see is like there are tags applied. So we can see this is in production, this is in production, this is in production. However, this one is in dev. So this is why PII is false, right? So I can house any information on here that isn't considered PII. Uh, but on this one, I may want more stringent requirements around that. Um, so you can see here, uh, you have dev and QA and web server equals true. Uh, so we can take a look and see what roles would look like, right? So if we go here to my DB team, uh, they have access to anything with dev or QA. This is all resources. I could limit this, right, to a particular type. So if I wanted to say uh, Postgres, uh, just regular, we can see there's two instances. So I can say the DB team can only touch anything or Postgres or maybe MySQL, et cetera, uh, with that specific tag. Um, but if we look at like our SRE team uh, and we see they have access to anything within the prod environment, which makes sense, right? They need to go in and run updates or go through and, and access anything on the fly in production in case they have to troubleshoot. Uh, so you can start to see where the power comes in, right? When we talk about access rules, uh, we can always add a new one, right? So if I wanted to uh, say that they get any SSH, we'll do certificate-based uh, with env equals prod, or maybe we want to say front end, right, or back end. They can always have access to anything, or so anything I tag as a DB. Looks like there's not a tag there, so if I say, uh, you know, I, I could use some of these predefined ones. Uh, I could say, you know, for instance, go through and say PII equals true uh, so they can access anything with PII and I save that. Uh, any new servers that come online, uh, as you can see, I have none now, but if I went through and added one with any of these tags, uh, it would automatically get added in. Um, so you can see that that's what the powerful thing is tagging within our system is that it'll automatically refresh and allow you to access those resources and it's sort of a set it and forget it. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't change it, right? You can always add more roles to a user or update the current roles or create a specifically new role. Um, we kind of leave that up to you. Uh, so that's why, you know, it's, it's nice to be thoughtful about those categorizations because it's more powerful for you and impactful uh, that you can sort of set it and forget it. So thanks again. Uh, a couple of quick things that I wanted to go over. Uh, you may be wondering within StrongDM, right, can you update tags after the fact? Um, yes, you can. So that's one nice thing about us is that you're able to modify tags for different resources on the fly, either using our SDK, the web UI, or Terraform. Uh, those are great ways to access and update. Um, another thing you can do is you can modify access rules, right? They don't have to be stagnant. Um, you can go through and change the different types. Uh, what they apply to, is it static? Is it dynamic based on tags? Uh, and because not all resources stay the same over time. Uh, so those are just a few things to think about as you go through and start tagging uh, and continue on that journey through access with StrongDM.